Evening, welcome to Mashiach Mystery Series. So tonight's view is dedicated to Ilu Nishmas Shachna Ben Avraham. In the previous year, we talked about what is the Indian, what is the concept of Mashiach in general. So we went through, explained it according to according to Nigla, according to Chesidus, um simply uh, at a deeper level the different we talked about the different kufas the different uh, stages of Yemais Mashiach. so what I would be what I'd like to do the, this evening beginning from from this year it's we're going to start talking about how we see how these in Yanim of Mashiach are, are already happening or beginning to happen I meaning although Mashiach hasn't yet come but the Rebbe has has told us and has and has uh, uh, has focused our attention to things that are happening in the world that indicate the fact that we are standing on the threshold of Gula. So now, before we get into what the Rebbe says, just a little introduction. So. In general, the whole concept of G'dayle Yisrael, of Jewish leaders talking about how Mashiach is imminent, is not something new. Rabbi isn't the first one um, throughout the history of the Jewish people, throughout Golas, to say that we're on, that Mashiach is about to come. So, in fact, G'dayle Yisrael, throughout all the generations, have all mentioned different kitzim, different end times, so to say, you could call them predictions about when Mashiach um, is meant to come. So, at another occasion, we talked at length about what, what's the whole concept of these of these uh, kids in. What does it mean that there's an end time and did they make a mistake? And the answer is, in short, that Chas there was no mistakes, but these were opportune times um, for Mashiach to come. And there were, at, at those different times, the Jewish people had reached through the Avoda a certain level. And if we would have been Zaycha, if we would have merited, Mashiach could have came at those times. So in all these different generations, G'dayli is so pointed to different indications that Mashiach is on his way. So I think one of the most noteworthy of the G'dayli Israel that did this was the Rambam. Rambam. So the Rambam wrote a whole letter called Igeris Teiman, letter to Yemen. And... The, the purpose of this letter was to was to encourage and to strengthen the belief in Mashiach. And in, and in that letter, the Rambam shows how, according to his opinion, we're literally, Mashiach is about to come. And he points to different things that were happening then that that show that Mashiach is on, is, is on his way. And he talked about also predictions for the future, about how Nevua, prophecy will come back, come back to the Jewish people as a as a preparation for Mashiach and other similar things. So, in other words, this concept over here of of of, of pointing out of how the world is ready for the Geula and and uh, is not something that was started by the Rebbe. It's, it happened. It was in previous generations also. So, nevertheless, I think there's a very big difference between what the what was said in all previous generations and all previous uh, kitzin that the Daily Yisrael said. And and what the Rebbe spoke about. So when all the other Gedele Yisrael, when they were talking about different uh, Kitsin, uh, Kates, Mashiach, this is like the end time, this is when Mashiach is meant to come. So, right, Arizal mentioned, right, you mentioned the Arizal also mentioned there was an opportune time when Mashiach could have came. So when the Rebbe spoke about how we're holding Al Safa Geula, I don't think the Rebbe was just saying that this is another opportune time for Mashiach to come. 
Rather, the Rebbe was saying something much more than that. The Rebbe was saying that we've reached a certain stage that we've finished the Aveda in Galas. And now there's a certain new, like a new Aveda to bring the Gula. So in other words, it's not just another opportune time to bring Mashiach, but it's we've reached a certain stage and now we've completed, so to say, the Aveda in Galas, as we'll see what that means. And now we have a special Aveda to bring, to bring the Gula. So what's the difference? The difference is, is that in, in previous times, so there was a kate, there was a, an opportune time for Mashiach to come, and unfortunately Mashiach didn't come. Okay, so we, we missed the opportunity. Okay, now, now back to regular. But I believe what the Rebbe is saying is that it's not about a special uh, uh, opportunity. It's not about a certain time, a certain year exactly, that this is an opportune time. It's we've reached a certain stage now. We've completed the Avodah and Galus, and now... We need to focus all our efforts to bring Mashiach B'Payal, to actually bring Mashiach. So that's one, that's, 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 one, that's one point. Another point is, which goes hand in hand, is Rabbi says that there's certain in Yonim of the Geula, certain things that already began. Or the, the, the Rabbi's actual lesson was, Kol in Yoni HaGeula Hishchidu Kfar. All the in Yonim of the Geula, they began already. So, T- um, tonight, that's only another point. That we're not just saying that we finished the Avod and Golos. We're saying that the Inyanum of the Geula also began, which it makes sense. The two things go together. We finished the Avod and Golos. Now the Inyanum of the Geula begin. So what I want to talk about tonight is the different Nikudas that the Rebbe spoke about, different points, how we finished the Avod and Golos, and we'll see it inside in in the in the Rebbe's lashon. Of course, there's a lot of different uh, letter. There's a lot of different. Uh, Times and the Rebbe spoke about these these points, um, but just to see inside a couple a couple points. Okay, so now we talk about this whole concept: the avoda and Gullus was finished, right? So what does that mean exactly? So wh- which avoda are we talking about? What, what is the avoda of Gullus? What is the service of the Jewish people in Gullus meant to be that that we've now finished? So I think we could uh, we could break it down to to, to three nekudos, three points. Um, one bepashtos, just in, uh, this, simply uh, according to the pshutei shel mikra, then deeper according to Kabbalah, and then even deeper according to chesedus. So let's start with with uh, bepashtos pshutei shel mikra. This is a simple understanding. So we're going to get to pashtos nitzavim soon. Parshas Nitzavim, so it says what's going to happen. It says after the Jewish people have been in Gullus, they've been in exile, and all the terrible things have happened. So then we're going to do tshuva, and then we're go- Hashem is going to take us out of Gullus, bring us back to Eretz Yisrael. So in other words, what the Torah is telling us is that what's the pre- prerequisite for Geula? Tshuva. So simply, why is that the prerequisite for Gula. Why, does, why do we have to do Tshuva? So the answer is very simple. Because just on, at face value, what's, what, was the, what was the cause of Gullus? It was because of our sins that we were exiled from, from our land. So what we need to do is we need to do Tshuva. We need to rectify our sins. And then the Gula can come. So that's the that's the that's bepashtus what the avoid in Gullus is. What's the avoid in Gullus? It's Tshuva. Right? To tshuva, it's to 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 rectify the the to rectify the 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 cause of gullus. Okay. Oh, and so that oh, so that that fits in very well with with the with what the in in the year Tavshin Gimel Tavshin Dalit, 1943, 1944. So the Friedrich Rebbe spoke about la alter la tshuva, la alter la Right? Immediate tshuva brings immediate gula, immediate redemption. So, because that's the, that's the seder, right? That's the that's the process. Tshuva is what brings geula. Okay. So now the question is: Did we really do? Tshuva? So, the, so now we're saying the rabbi is telling us that we are ready for the geula. We finished the avodah in galus. So, what does that mean? So, it means that we've already done tshuva. So the rabbi said on many occasions that we already did tshuva. Now you look around and you'll see that well, people still do averus. Maybe a person knows about himself. I still do Averis, right? I'm not perfect. I haven't done Shuva, so to say, properly yet. But, says the Rebbe, that 
that doesn't that's not a ma'akir for the gula. That doesn't that's not gonna hold back the gula. Because there can be there must be at least one yid who had a hero tshuva. There must be at least one Jew who at least, sorry, every single Jew at least had one hero tshuva, one thought of tshuva, and then itself it says in Halacha that if a person is Makadash as a Isha Manasha needs If he if he uh, betrothes a woman on condition that he's a tzadigam, or even if he's a Russia gumbor, so she's mikudeshes, at least misafik, right? She's considered betrothed, at least in doubt, because shama hiru tshuva believe that maybe he had a hiru tshuva, maybe 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 he had a thought that he's going to do tshuva. So you see that just one thought of tshuva that itself already can totally change a person around his status in halacha. Now you now you might ask, okay, well it's just a hiru tshuva, right? It's just a, uh, it's just uh, just a thought. It, it, seem, it seemingly didn't necessarily have, uh, didn't cause necessarily for the person to totally change around his life, and and into thought, speech, and action, and totally fulfill all Torah and mitzvahs. However, it's clear that that the type of tshuva that's necessary as a preparation for the geula doesn't have to be a complete tshuva. In fact, we find many nevuos. In, in Parshas and Tzavim itself, which clearly say that, that it's only after Mashiach comes, only then will we truly do tshuva. So it's clear that the type of tshuva that's, ne- that's necessary for the geula doesn't have to be a complete tshuva. A hero tshuva is enough. So l- let's take a look, for example, let's look in Shabbos Parshas, Noyach Tafshin Nun Beis, 19, the end of 1991, on the top of page 223. So over here, the Rebbe makes a similar point. It says, Even when a person knows where he's holding, that he needs things that need to be fixed. This is not a contradiction to the Eidos, to the testimony of Nesida Reinu, of the Nasi of our generation, that the Avaida is already finished. And we're, we're, we're already ready to, to, to greet Mashiach. Why not? Because the Avaida of the Jewish people in general, throughout all the generations that's necessary during Golos in order to come to the completion of Geula, which the ultimate completion of redemption is dependent on our actions, on our divine service throughout Golos. This time of Anishlama. So it's already finished. So the Aveda of the Jewish people in general has been completed. And there's no explanation at all why the 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 Geula has been is 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 not here yet. And therefore, even if there's an individual who, for whatever reason, as long as the Geula hasn't yet come, he's still lacking in in something in his Avodas Hashem, in his divine service, so it's an individual thing which definitely has to be fixed, has to be rectified. But it doesn't take away from the fact that the Jewish people in general are ready for the Gula. Being that that's so, therefore it's also easier for each individual to fix what he's lacking. And to, and to fix it out of joy. Knowing that Geul is coming now. So, again, here the Rebbe is making it clear that we're not perfect. We're not perfect. We could be that there's individual people and individual things that are still lacking. But the Jewish people in general have already fi- fixed everything as a whole. Whatever is necessary to bring the Geul to put it in, in other words, the Jewish people as a whole, as a whole body, so to say, the Jewish people are like are, are, are compared to a body. So they are complete. They have all 248 limbs and all 365 blood vessels. 
Both spiritually, they have all 248 <coughs> positive mitzvahs in general, and all 365 negative pro, uh, commandments. They're, they're complete in all of them. So, the, whatever is lacking in an individual, it's, it's, for example, if a person has some type of very minor, m- minor ailment in one specific part of his body, that's able to be fixed through a very, it's able to be, person is able to be healed through a very, um, a very quick and easy refuah. Yeah? Commission Kosovo Rampe Rampe, like it says, that the doctor can heal. Shinitna Rishus Vakhla Rafila Rampes. Kailvam Yukul Harafua Shai de Hatshuva. Taylor Chuvashim of Yu Fula Ilam. The Adli Shlaimus Harafua Shihi I Karas Achilam uh uh Milam Afra Limila Milam Afraya. So what the Rebbe is saying over here is the muscle he's giving is you have a person who's completely healthy. A person is not lacking any any one of his uh, 248 limbs or 365 blood vessels. It's totally healthy. Now, it could be, so he got a little cut in his finger, yeah? What do you do if you get a cut in your finger? Put on a Band-Aid, right? <laughs> Put on a Band-Aid, right? Very simple, right? Or you might want to take some... Uh, some uh, uh, you know antibiotic uh, lotion or something and put it on right. So you're gonna say the person's not healthy because he got a paper cut, right? So we're talking about the the avoid of the entire Jewish people throughout the entire almost 2,000 years of Gullus. Everything the Jewish people have accomplished. So everything the Jewish people have accomplished, all the neshamas do like one body. So looking at everything as a whole. So, we're, we're healthy, we're complete, we've done everything. So now, of course, there's individuals that might be lacking here or there in one thing or, or another. And of course, they have to work on it, they have to fix it. But that doesn't take away from the fact that the Jewish people as a whole are healthy. We've done tshuva as a whole. And it, furthermore, the Rebbe says every single individual has done tshuva in one way or another. Had a, has had a hero tshuva, some type of ch- ch- thought, thought of tshuva. So therefore, there's no reason to say that the fact that we haven't done shuva completely is what's is what's holding the gula back. And therefore, we don't have any explanation why the gula hasn't come yet. All we know is is that we have to do whatever we can to make it happen. And whatever we're doing from now is not that we have to fix something, but it's a special avoda, as the Rebbe says, other places to to bring the gula into the world. So this is explaining it in in the simple simple sense, right? What is gulas? Here to accomplish, it's here to accomplish, we should do tshuva, and we've done tshuva. Okay. Cool, yeah, like, okay, that was said 25 years, whatever it was, so can you mess up, like, So you're, so you're asking, is that this was said a long time, right? This was said 27 years ago, right? Yeah, right. Almost 28 years ago. So, so what, what, so how could it be taking, t- taking so long? So that's a good question. I'm not which, to take right. My question is, oh, can can we go backwards? Okay. The answer is we can never go backwards. We can never go backwards, right? That we're always going forwards, even throughout Gullus, right? We're always going forwards. Even I'm it says, even when there was a kates, even when there was a kates that we weren't zoichet, it's not the. It doesn't. That doesn't mean that we didn't accomplish something. The Rabbi explains elsewhere that. We once we reach that milestone, so then we realize that we could reach an even greater milestone. So there is a concept of Shema Yigrim Hachet. Yeah, there is such a concept. The concept, but in the in the general sense, there is no concept of that. In other words, the Shema Yigrim Hachet, as far as the general kavanah is concerned, that Rabbi explains, is only that we can sort of say slow down the process. As far as the process, as far as the general, pro, uh, the kavana el yoyna, the Hashem's kavana, the ultimate goal is that the gula should come. That's something that we can't stop. It's something that we can't stop. We could slow down the process. It could be slowed down because you're going to have hate. Hate can slow down the process, but it can't, it, it, it can't, it doesn't, uh, it can't, can't regress, right? Yeah, we can't regress. 
So now, you're wondering why the Geul didn't come. So I just want to point out that the Rebbe in Tafshin and Beis over here in 1991 also was wondering why the Geul didn't come. So it's an old question, why the Geul didn't come. Right? It's an old question, right? So now, for people like us, like myself, I'll say, so when, so, uh, so yeah, so it, if it's a year, a month, right? So then, it's like, okay, we don't know why the Geul didn't come, but... Okay, but it's it must be coming soon, so like that we can like handle, so to say, emotionally. But the truth is, is that as far as the Rebbe is concerned, as soon as the Gula is uh, meant to come, so if we're in the Gula one second longer, the, so it's already a big question, right? So maybe for us that's not such a big question, or it doesn't bother us so much the fact that we're in Gula for an extra second, an extra day, an extra month, maybe an extra year, right? An extra two years, right? We expect that oh, it's, it's happening, you know, imminent. I- I- imminently, but if you really think about it, if we finish the Avaida and Galos, so then the question is, so why didn't the Gula come, right? So it's a question immediately, as soon as the Avaida is finished, that question begins. And so, I just want to point out, obviously we didn't think, we don't want, we don't like to think this way, but but in, the, but just like the Rebbe was wondering in Tafshin and Bays how we could be in Galos for an extra second, for an extra minute, for an extra day, right? So, but nevertheless, somehow we are, because Hashem has some reason why we're still in Gullus. So it could take 27 years also. <laughs> so, the point over here, I'm, I'm sort of digressing over here, the point, the point I believe over here that I was trying to, to bring out to us is, is that we have to get a move on it over here. We have to realize that that the Avod and Golos is, is finished, and so now we really have to make this happen because this is really, we've, we've reached the stage where we have to be hyper-focused on bringing, on, on bringing Gula. He's not telling us over here that we finished everything and therefore just go to sleep, right? Sure. Or you finished everything, I'm not sure why he didn't come, that someone rigged the system, right? Obviously Hashem is still in charge, he knows what he's doing. The point he's trying to bring out to, uh, to us is don't think that, oh, we have to still, you know, we have a still, just don't expect Mashiach um, uh, so soon. Don't be so fo- so ho- hyper focused because, anyways, we've got a lot to, fi- to to fix. He's saying, no, we figure we, we're, we're ready, right? This, this can happen any second. Okay, so that's as far as tshuva is concerned. Now, according to Kabbalah, so what is the what is the uh, what's the purpose of Galus? Kabbalah is explained by Chassidus is avodas habirurim. So what's the concept in general of Avedis Habirurim? That there's the sparks of Kedusha, sparks of holiness that are in the entire world. That are hidden, right? That they fell from Elam Hatoyu, from the world of chaos, so to say. It's a spiritual concept. And through the Jews being spread out throughout uh, throughout Golos, we elevate the world. And when we finish elevating the world, the entire world, that's the concept of Golos that we spread out, right? So then that's when the Geula comes. So what about Avodis Habirurim? So now you can look at your paper, the Hashmates. This is from uh, Vayeshev, Tafshin and Beis. Shabbos Parshas Vayeshev, again, in the end of 1991. The beginning of the Sicha, it says, We spent, we have spoken many times lately, especially in the last time, based on all signs, our generation is the last generation of exile and therefore the first generation of redemption. Because we, are, we have already finished all concept of We're already ready for the complete redemption through Mashiach. There are those that ask. Seemingly, the redemption is dependent on the fact that the entire world has to be ready. Not just one person or a number of people. It's not just in one place of the world. It has to be the entire world. It's because redemption is connected to, it's dependent on the Jewish, pe- Jewish people being gathered from the four corners of the earth. We also have to refine and elevate the nations of the world in all lands. Where do we see 
Ask those who ask. When, where do we see that the entire world is ready for redemption more than in previous generations? That's the question. The matter will be understood by first explaining the reason why the Jewish people have to travel from place to place during exile. The reason is as follows. Even though the reason why the Jewish people are spread out in many countries throughout the world, they're spread out among all the nations. On the on the on the surface, it seems that this is it's a yurida. It's right. It's a decline. And the more we spread out, the more the decline. So it seems to be negative. Our sages say that. Hashem did a tzedakah. He did, he did righteousness. He did a favor to the Jewish people, the fact that he spread them among the nations. The deeper meaning behind this is, 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 is known. It's the following. The reason why it's considered a favor is because of the special mile, the special advantage that the Jewish people accomplish in every single place where they are spread out. What happens is the Jewish people, they settle in a strange land. They, so to say, enclose themselves, obviously in a way that's permissible according to halacha, in the Minhagim of the place and the customs of the place. They speak the language of the country when they're talking, when they're just talking about regular things. Every single place according to its thing. The Jewish people, they, so to say, they they come into that that place and they 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 become a part of the place, right? They become. They, they, yeah, they speak the language, right? And they take on the qualities, so to say, of that place, right? Yeah. I think it's an obvious thing, right? Jewish people who live in France are not the same as those who live in England and those who live in Spain, right? There's Sfardin, there's Ashkenazim. Even nowadays, right, there's American Jews, right? There's South American Jews, right? There's Jews who are all over, and the Jews in, who live in different places, they, they're all different and the differences come a lot. A lot of the differences have to do with the place that they live, which obviously these differences are, so to say, external things. Which all we all have the same Torah, the same mitzvahs. But this is an important thing, and we'll see. As our sages say, when you go to a place, you have to follow the customs. The halacha says. The Rambam writes that in, in, uh, in a foundation in halacha when it comes to business is that you follow the custom of the place. We're talking about the customs of the country, of the, of, of the nations, non-Jews. The purpose is in order to use these customs to serve Hashem. Because everything we do, it's all for the sake of heaven. And you have to know Hashem in all your ways. To the extent that we see it adds into Torah mitzvahs. Like, uh, like it says in Chesidus, explaining what our sages say, The next page, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the second page. Uh, if you flip over, yeah. It says the reason why the Jewish people were sent among the nations in order that there should in order that converts should be added to the Jewish people. What's the concept of converts? Converts they allude to these sparks of holiness which are found in all things in the world. The fact that Hashem sent us into exile in all these different places in the world, 
It's in order to refine and to elevate the sparks that are in that place. This is the favor that Hashem did for us that He sent us into exile among all the nations. Through that we elevate the sparks of Kedusha that are found in all the customs of every single country and every single place. Says the Rebbe, Mizem Muvenes Hamayla, Bekachshi Yehudim, Mispazum, Mubisyashim, and Medim Mishrabis Ba'olam. Now we understand what's the advantage of the fact that the Jewish people are in so many different countries in the world. Ad la'ifin shalafarats the Yama Bekadim of Tzafain of Anegba. Right? To the extent the Jewish people are spread out literally to the north and the south and the east and the west. Kidav kali davi dasim shal bnei Yisrael b'chol Medina Sa'ilam. Because it's only through the avoid of the Jewish people in all countries of the world, in a way that they enclose themselves in every single place, through settling and living in, the, in that country, and they act when it comes to permissible things according to the customs of that place, only through that, Yochel Yehudi Lifel Asabir of Hazichuch. That's how a Jew is able to elevate that place, to refine it. Each place according to its, according to the the, the qualities of that place. He's, the Rebbe says it's Bavin Shalom Matzalamayla. In other words, it's not something that's happening from Hashem. That Hashem is making the Biru happen. We're working on it. It's our avoda, right? So, by using by using the the minhagim of every place, so to say, in Avodah Hashem, that's how we elevate that place. Mm-hmm. That's how we make a dwelling place for Hashem in the lower realms. Why is it called Tachtoinim? Literally, lower realms. What are the realms? Meaning, there's a lot of different. There's a lot of different low places in, in this lowly world. <coughs> and this is only when we go to each place and we live there. If, the, if you're only there temporarily, or you affect that place from being elsewhere, yeah, you're not able, you're not as successful to affect that place as you would be able to if you would live in live in that place. So now let's let, let's 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 go to Gimel, page four four hundred one. Now, so now now we, we can answer the question. So now we understand. We understand what we understand is like this: that the way Avodas Habirudim works, the way we elevate the entire world, which is the purpose of Gullus, of, of, of Gullus in the simple sense that we spread out throughout the entire world, right? So, is in order to elevate those places, which, by the way, this is what the um, the concept of Gullus, um, according to Kabbalah and Chassidus, this is what it adds over the simple meaning. Meaning, if the simple reason of Gullus would just, would, would just be to do tshuva, so first of all, it doesn't explain why Gullus is so long, Second of all, it doesn't explain why the Jewish people have to be scattered throughout the entire world. So we're exiled from our land, so we could just be in one place, West, right? right? One place. We could be, right. right? We could have just stayed like we were in Mitzrayim and in Bavel, right? All other Goliaths, the Jewish people were primarily located in one, in, in, in one country. Mm-hmm. For some reason, this Goliath, the Jewish people, literally are spread out throughout the entire world, literally. So. What we understand is is because the purpose of Gullus isn't is to elevate the entire world, and the way we do that is by going to all these different countries, and becoming so to say a part of that country, and using out the 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 mode in the customs of that country in Avodah Hashem, and that's how we elevate that country. So now we can understand why we're saying that Avodah Shabbatim is finished. Based on this, we'll understand. 
what is the advantage of this generation in comparison to the previous generations. In previous generations, the Jewish people were never spread out so much in this generation. <coughs> We're not even talking about when there was the Beis Hamikdash, when the Jewish people lived in Israel and the surrounding countries. Even in the first generations of exile, his Jews only lived in certain countries, or at least they only lived in the higher hemisphere, right? And it was in the Jewish way of looking at things, so. Tighter way of looking at things, the Eretz Yisrael is on the top, and everything in America is the lower hemisphere. So, Jewish, the Jewish people, they primarily lived in Europe, right, North Africa, right, um, Middle East, right, which was, which was the, so to say, it's the higher hemisphere. They didn't live in the lower hemisphere. They didn't live in, Amer- in the Americas, they didn't live in Australia. But in the later generations, so the Jewish people spread out through many more countries. Until we reach this lower hemisphere to, to America. As the generations move on, it's only added. Until our generations, when the Jewish people are found in all parts of the world, and they fulfill Torah mitzvahs there, and in such a way that they're enclosed in the in the, in the customs of the place, to the extent that in every single place they're continuing to make new institutions of Torah mitzvahs in every single place. When you think about it, I feel like a cow, even if just for just for a moment. We see the advantage of our generation in comparison to previous generations. The fact that every single country was refined, was elevated. Based on what we explained before, that according to all signs, we have finished all of the beautiful so we see how so it's understood why we're already ready for the gula so that's the that's according to kabbalah that the whole concept of avedis habirurim is through the fact that the jewish people are spread out through all countries and now we've reached all the countries literally the entire, sh- world. Right, the entire world literally <laughs> what <laughs> So now people ask the question: So what does that mean? Seemingly, there's a there's a avodas habirurim. Does that mean that that there's no sparks of kedusha left? So obviously, I don't know the answer, right? but I, I would assume obviously there's still sparks of kedusha. I think when the rabbi is talking about finishing avodas habirurim, it's similar to the same idea he talked about tshuva. Now, in a general sense, that the 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 level of biru of biru that's necessary to bring the geula has been finished, and now. Obviously, we're continuing to elevate the world to an even greater level, right? There's a biru. Chassidus talks about this a biru risha and there's a biru sheni, right? There's different levels of birurim, or even after biyasam mashiach, after the birurim, there's yichudim, which is already ele- elevation kedusha itself. So there's always further, there's always a, a, a further elevation that that's uh, that's possible. But the Rebbe's point is, is that what was that, whatever was necessary to bring the geula that was accomplished. Okay, so the third thing, which is which Chassidus says, which is something which is which is necessary to bring the geula, is the based on the uh, based on what the Mashiach told the Baal Shem Tev, that uh, that the Baal Shem Tev asked Mashiach, mar, when is the Master coming? When is Mashiach coming? And he said, Lechshia He said, when your wellsprings um, have been spread outwards. So, as we talked about in the previous shurim, the reason why um, Chassidus is a, a necessary hachana for Mashiach is because really Chassidus is a foretaste of Mashiach. The whole concept of Chassidus, it's the gili of the yechida of Torah, the essence of Torah, that's the whole concept of Mashiach. Mashiach is the concept of yechida, it's the essence of the neshama. 
and Mashiach himself is the Yechida HaKlolos, he's the general Yechida, which is the essence, essence of the Neshama. We talked about it in previous classes, previous Yurim. So, the question is, is so have we completed our job of Hafatah Samayanas? Right? Of, 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 of spreading the wellsprings uh, of, of Mashiach. So, so over here in, the, if, over here you have the, the Sikh of Shabbos Parshas Ekev, Tafshin Nun Aleph. Right, also in 1991. So um, over here, the Rebbe talks about right. How could it be that after that Mashiach hasn't yet come? So the Rebbe says that we know that Mashiach is dependent on Hafatas Hamayana Ischutza, on spreading the wellsprings of Chsidus. So if Mashiach hasn't yet come, so it must be that. It makes sense to say that there, was, there must be a group of Jews that Chassidus hasn't yet reached. So the, Re- uh, so the Rebbe goes on to say that those, there are Jews who are blind. And they're not able to... Uh, so even though Chassidus has already been translated into many different languages, but what about Jews who are blind? So... The Rebbe says that that um, that now, yeah, now that uh, right, that that now that uh, the Tanya has, was tr- was translated into Braille. So now we see that 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 Hafatza Samayones has reached literally every single Jew. Yeah. So based. If you look in uh, page 173, it says, right? That in the last, uh, the, these last days, and then in 1991, the Tani was printed in Braille. We was talking now here. We, this is a whole new stage in spreading the wellsprings of Chassidus that we reached a whole new uh, uh, group of people, people who are blind. Oh, here's an important point. Now, even though the Tanya hasn't yet reached every single uh, every single Jew who is blind, oh, so the Rebbe says a very important point over here that. The very fact that there exists in the world a Sefer Hatani in Braille, that itself brings the wellsprings of Chassidus to this group of Chutzah, of the outside. And it gives the possibility that the wellsprings of Chassidus should be available even for Jews who Rahman al Tslan are, 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 are in such a situation that they can't see. During their lifetime they should have a Shaykhis Latir Sachsidis. So it seems what the Rebbe is saying over here is when we're talking about okay, so the Rebbe goes on to say that you don't have the end of the Sikh over there, that um That uh, oh you have over here. Mm. No, it's, I didn't. I didn't make the cop. That didn't make the copy. Yeah. The Rabbi concludes that Hari Achshav La Achre Shekvar Paul Lugam Indian Zed Hafatza Samayonis Kud said Davu Baru Shet Take It From Me At Mamish Tzricha Kvar Lavi Agul Hamitz Feshlam I Did Meshech Tzim Kena. So again, so the Rabbi is saying that based on this, now that we've Chassidus has been spread to every group of Jews, so so it must be that Meshech is ready to come. There's nothing left. Now, you can ask the question, so is every single Jew learning Chassidus? No. <laughs> right? No. Right? There are still many Jews that are not yet learning Chassidus, right? Not only those who are blind, right? There are many Jews who are fully capable of learning Chassidus, who can re- learn it, can, who can study it from the original, but unfortunately have not yet uh, started, be- begun to learn Chassidus. So, but it seems, so why are we saying that we finished Hafata Samayanais? So it seems that the Rebbe is saying is, is that but the accessibility of Hafatza Samayanis. In other words, it's there, right? It's there, it's available, right? 
It used to be it wasn't available for everybody. They didn't know about it. It wasn't available. It, they couldn't. They, they had no way of accessing it. And that's what the task is. Yeah. So obviously, yeah. So when Mashiach will come, so then as we discussed in previous uh, Shi'urim, like the Rambam says, when Mashiach comes, then Hashem kamaim Right? The entire world will be filled with the knowledge of, uh, of Hashem. In other words, everybody will learn Chassidus. What's Chassidus? So Deyas Hashem. Right? In other words, on a whole different level. Right? Everybody will experience. Right? But the point is that now it's available. It's there. And this Rebbe spoke in 1991, right? And now we can understand, uh, and nowadays, 27 years later, we see how much more this has, has. It's unbelievable, right? Right? It's it's incomparable, right? The availability based on, on the technology and and in classes that are available, right? It, it's just in in every single language and for every single audience, it's unbelievable. Just a short story. I was on Merkish Shlichus in in uh, in, uh, in Washington State on an island called Bainbridge Island. A number of years ago, ten years ago, and uh, I met a Jew there, and and uh, he tells me that uh, he actually has. He wasn't religious at that point. I haven't kept in touch with him, but uh, but he said he has a he has a group. Uh, a Torah study group where they meet once a week. So, and he leads the group and he tells me that, you know, I don't know if you've heard about it, but there's this wonderful website that I use that uh, that helps me prepare the classes. It's called Chabad.org. <laughs> so, so you're talking about over here a Jew that he, there was, that, that, at that point in time there was no Shliach, there was no, any, no Chabad emissaries on Bainbridge Island. But uh, he, right, and he had, but he, but he, he just, he, he, he was able to access Torah and the Chassidus, right, it's available. He was available. He was teaching Torah. Yeah, meaning, to, to the extent he was teaching Torah, meaning he didn't know very much, but he was, uh, yeah, they, they, they studied. And even now, it's even more, it's available in the phone. Now it's available everywhere, that's right. Everybody has it on their phone now, that's right. So, basically, the point is: so we have the avodah in Golis, right? As we, which is first of all to do tshuva, right? Like we spoke about, also how the whole purpose of the is to bring to the shleimus of Torah and mitzvahs, and the concept of avodah sabirurim and hafatzah samayonis. All of that has been done to the extent necessary that the gula should, gula should come. Of course, we could add, right? Of course, we could do, we could add, we do things to fix, and of course. There was still, we could uh, elevate the world more. And of course, there's more more chassidus to teach, and that's what we have to do. And that's our job, to hasten the gula, to bring the gula to the But the point is, that we have to realize that none of this is, that that we've done it, that that every, we've done enough that, that the gula can come. And therefore, there's, there's literally, the, the gula can come right now. There's literally nothing, nothing is, nothing, we, we can't say anything that now is being ma'akiv the gula, is holding the gula back. It's, it's possible that every it was, it was always possible. I maybe put it this way: that it was always possible for the geula to come. But that was a special like, concept. It's a zochu achichena, right? If we're meritorious, Hashem will hasten it, and uh, and uh, and uh, so we'll sort of say we'll, we'll we'll like skip steps. Now well, there's no steps. There's no steps to skip. It's ready to happen. We just have to be. Uh, the Rebbe says now the avod is to be megala the geula in the world, reveal it in the world. Reveal it, Papa. That's right. Do a, the Rebbe told us to acts of goodness and kindness to each person. They can take a part in hastening the revelation of the Gula in the world. And we should be zeicher. It should happen. Take it from Yad Mamish. Yeah, I'm a